For each of the 52 scripts, we bring together the scriptwriters, designers, storyboard artists, director, producers, and Rowan Atkinson to discuss all the elements that go into making the animated Mr. Bean. So let's start. Should we start with the designs? She's called Roxy, isn't she now? She is and we should be getting a new um, version. It's still a rough version of the song, which um, I had recorded. Okay, so we start on a close-up of Roxy, um, which is part of the main poster, whatever the final design is decided at. Okay, so we go back to the jaw drop in 2.50. Yeah, I think, I think Zach, he's absolutely frozen. Yeah. Uh, 2.47, 2.50, 2.51, 252, it's just the same. And then he just falls out of the <laughs> Right. <laughs> no twitch. No twitch? I've oh. got, I've got. <laughs> oh, I see. A slight twitch, twitch and then... Over back. No, no, I guess that was. Straight over. Okay. Does he close his eyes before he falls backwards? Technique. No. Would it be in no. character for him to close his eyes before he falls backwards? No. no. Just, just sort of. Just roll slightly. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It could so, just, uh, yeah I could just make him, you know, step as a board basically. Yeah, I think it's funnier if, it, it, if he doesn't close his eyes. Yeah. The bodyguard in close-up recognises him as Scowls. Uh, we wipe to a corridor. Bodyguard blood marches, being into the centre. I think he's got to stop in some way or do mm. some kind okay. of action. Oh, I see. It's, it's almost turning the spotlight. Well, I, I just yeah. finished. Yes, I just that's finished. what I was thinking. Yes. Is that the spotlight goes down on him. Well, maybe he could just start sweeping again. Maybe he could just look at the thing and then go. So I start sweeping. Well, shouldn't he look at? He should turn and look at the door. Yeah, yeah, there should be some sort of introduction to her. Yeah. He, he is dreaming of Roxy, definitely. Yes. So if he did that, I just don't think he should be held doing that. I think he should then. I think he should put it upright and lean on. I think he should put the broom upright, put his hands on top of the broom. Dreaming. And you know, do that kind of dream and. If only. And you know, you kind of drift into him, and it flares, or whatever, whatever beautiful way you want to go. The into spotlight an image. Will maybe come down uh, as we start travelling up, and then shh, it's on there. Sorry, you say it's a broom rather than a bottle. Yes. Okay. Um, and only to, I mean, actually here it doesn't matter. I mean, here it could be the nearest thing, you know, to hand for being, and the hairstyle thing is a nice. <laughs> I mean, I would love to hear the phrase, where have you been, more often, actually. I mean, I think... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the, I, Because I, I feel as though that, that, that to me, possibly should be the, at least the perceived uh, title of the song. I mean, rather than, I mean, I mean, we don't have to change the lyric much of it at all. At the end there, my funny man, where have you been all my life? Where have you been, should be the last line that she sings, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And a where have you been... Maybe instead of that all my life as well, after the second verse. And also, somehow, actually, the way the music is phrased and also the way she's singing it, she doesn't put much emphasis on being. It's almost a bit of a down moment. Where have you been? She sing, she's singing, whereas you feel, where have you been? And so to push can, it. So he can pick up on that. Um, I feel as though, yeah, exactly, to really... We probably underplayed it a bit for that very reason of not yeah, going, yeah, it's a not. song for him. Yeah, yeah. But we can push that more. I was 20 almost. Yeah, it's 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 it
As it were, you know, lift her up in the air <laughs> and then spin her. Spin and catch her down here. Yeah, and then, and, then, oh. and then remember the time. That's a very funny idea. <laughs> okay, thank you. And again. The first stage of the process was to uh, to get the scripts, and then to get the storyboards based on the scripts, which are drawn up by uh, the uh, artists at, uh, at Richard Purdom's. Um, and then we would record uh, to uh, the storyboards, and uh, it was actually um, with Rowan. Uh, the, the sessions would be uh, going through small sections, and him actually having done some live action. Uh, film stuff for the animators, uh, he would then uh, come in and record to the storyboard uh, in short sections which would then give us uh, Mr Bean's uh, reactions and actions and noises for the um, scenes in question. You imagine that you hear her singing Where Have You Been twice again from under the stage and almost nostalgically I think, oh Bean, and then dancing with the broom underneath the stage only to be confronted by a horrific clown-like prop, which makes which makes you jump, fall into a pile of boxes, and then a mother goose hen lands on your head, and you blindly stagger around and press a lever. Right, okay. Right. 26A autograph panels 323 to 334. Take one. <gasps> B. Very good. Terrific. Once we produced uh, the storyboard and the designs and everything uh, in terms of uh, our our side of things. We would send uh, Varga, the production studio on Mr. Bean, we would send them uh, a large box full of all the reference material that they would need. And it was something of something rather like this. And uh, in it would be essentially the Bible for that particular episode. And they'd receive a storyboard, a very detailed storyboard with dialogue and any particular notes that they might need. We would film the storyboard and uh, over it, uh, with the help of Dick Purdon uh, and Rowan Atkinson, uh, who would do the voice the voices himself, we would just uh, do a rough read of the dialogue uh, over the, the frozen still storyboard drawings. This helps us to time uh, out the action and uh, give a guide to Varga. My 
my job is I get given keyframes and I have to sort of create a mood and the uh, and the colour basically, choose the colour for each each keyframe. I'd use various things for this is the interior of the apartment stall, so we wanted a sort of 70s sort of John Lewis feel to it. So we've got a 70s, well actually 60s, 60s, 70s sort of feel. And Dave, uh, the main designer, sort of liked all of these colours, so we've basically created a sort of feeling around that, really. Here, the series director meets with Claudia Lloyd to discuss any problems in translating the story into animation. Only because whenever he brings his hand to his mouth, he feels like he's thinking. And this should be... Every scene, the studio will produce one of these folders containing all the bean drawings, backgrounds, props, and anything else vital to that scene. On average, there are 170 scenes per film. In total, over the 52 films produced, they'll have over 8,000 folders containing more than 6 million individual drawings. I um, watch the whole thing through in one go without stopping. And then when I've done that, I then go through it in tiny bursts, going through it little minute by minute by minute by minute. I make a, a list, an enormous list from start to finish of everything that happens in it that I think I might have to respond to. So, you know, he walks out the door there, his hands move across there, from there to there, and I'm not done exactly where in time that's happening. The music isn't that loud. Ever since the time. I think so. It should always be louder. It's not always emotional. Sometimes it is just diddle diddle. No, no, oh God, no. What's happened is Mr. Bean has appeared on stage next to this singer and she has stopped singing and the band sort of, when they realise what's happening, are stopping. By the second beat of the next bar, no one should still be making any noise. It's, got to, it's absolutely got to be the same as she does it on the on the picture. You actually used the one where she broke down. Yeah, I think we right. Well, we, I can still slot that line in. Yeah, so you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, it's the accompaniment. You can just fit the accompaniment yeah, to her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. My funny man, lift up your eyes with. Oh. 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 Okay. 
Okay, yeah, it's 35 for his first step. And then he walks off, yeah, just a few steps there. Okay, here we go. The Foley track would be, the lads would be actually having a real broom and when Bean is, is dancing with the broom or it drops, you, you will hear someone actually dropping a broom or you will hear real cardboard boxes dropping when he, when he accidentally bangs into a pile of stuff. These lovely ones here. And then you get wickets as well. <laughs> we had kind of two areas going on where the sound was being developed. We had Fitzrovia where the foley was to being done and very skilled business of putting in sound effects to match the action. And then I'm going away um, and uh, on another location I'm actually trying to make uh, the big set piece effects. By the time she says Roxy, sorry, by the time she says Roxy, they're at your low level. <laughs> Basically we go through and for each particular scene and make sure Bean's working and in sync. Um, then I'll go through and mix the dialogues, uh, Bean's dialogue with all the secondary dialogues. And then basically once we've got that sorted out then we'll go through and fit the effects and mix those in with the music. <clears throat> Stay back! Good night. Appreciably. Tune up, applause, show. Yeah. That would be logical. Funny man, stayed by my side. Where have you been? My world was great each night I pray My funny man lift up your eyes where I have Hello?